I just uh, shook the hand of our first guest uh, minutes ago, literally Ooh. seconds ago. Is that where you were? He's on the show today. Yes, comedian and really my favorite podcaster of all time, Mark Marin, joins us live in studio to tell us about his new Hulu yeah. series, A Day in the Life. The man smells of chamomile and success. You wouldn't know it. <laughs> Beautiful man. Then Gadgetpon reviews the new Nikon Cool Picks. We're going to actually conduct a hard hitting investigation to discover if the picks are, in fact, cool. Do you think they are? We'll have to wait, Candace. I can't spoil it. They are? Yeah, it's pretty good. Do you think it's going to be a 5 out of 5? It's a good five? camera. I don't want to. Oh, I'm not pointing to the bleachers so for Nikon. I'm just saying you should tune in. I'm very hopeful. And sorry to the one Japanese fan on Twitter who corrects me all the time and says, it's Nikon. No, it's Nikon here in America. <laughs> so I don't mean to start wars. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, as we live your childhood arcade memories when the Simpsons arcade games head to your console. Yeah. <laughs> we will tell you about it in indie games. And that movie Hugo won a bunch of Oscars this uh, weekend. I love that one with the animated thing. Does that mean you should buy it? Well, let Chris Gore tell you in DVD yeah. I love it. But to be very clear, all of that's amazing, right? You guys are already in. You're already buying now. Yeah. But you got to wait because there's more. That's not all we've got today. Welcome back. That's right. Hey guys. So Back in hey. Thank you. I, yeah, I was in I was in Cabo. A little tanner. Cervezas, laying on the beach, getting massages, but I missed you guys. Oh. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I thought you were like distributing mosquito nets in Africa or oh. something. <laughs> yeah. We're all right then? I think this was for later, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> this was for later, but we can we can tease the feed with this. That hey. will be fun. Well, it's <laughs> Do you want to tell people why there's suddenly a short stack of pancakes there? International IHOP Day! Pancake Day! Pancake Day! <laughs> You're bright red right now. No, I'm just really tan. I'm not red. I'm tan. <laughs> but you guys just want to see something really I feel normal until I stand next to Americans and... <laughs> next to Americans? Look at that hair! Candace represents the melting pot that I'm, is America. I'm, uh, I'm you really Mexican do. I'm Mexican now, okay? Look at me. <laughs> I'm Irish and Scottish. Okay, well, what's Native American? <laughs> Phenomenal. What's happening in the world? Okay, Sarah let's Underwood. get to that here. Um, the invite to Apple's big iPad event went out today, and it turns out the iPad 3 might be hitting stores much sooner than you think. Plus, some idiot registered a hire a hitman domain name to open his own murder business. Oh. <laughs> I saw that on Yelp. Dummy. Yeah, he's in jail. And okay. um, we've got all the details later in the feed. Oh, <laughs> <I'm good. laughs> in case this suggestive stack of pancakes that Sarah was fondling didn't bring it to your attention, it is National Pancake Day. Yeah, this is a very important day around the office here. The International House of Pancakes started this holiday six years ago to raise money for charity, and all day long you can swing by to get a free short stack. That's actually a really, really big stack, yeah. but I don't think it's a short stack. I love stack how we pick big. and choose our causes here on Attack of the Show. <laughs> and hold on, you can donate money to Children's Miracle Network of Hospitals. That is a, so that that's is a cool. good thing. I like yes. their and in fact, to honor this, I'm not going to be the, the negative Nancy that I usually oh my gosh, am. Thank you, Kevin. We're going to be gorging on some buttermilk beauties later on in the show. And yes. because it is such a special day, and it's for charity as well, I brought along this. One second here. It's very that? fragile. You guys, don't even talk loudly around it. It could shatter. This is a Pereira family heirloom. Ta -da 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 -da. Just look, don't touch. This is an antique crystal syrup decanter. Uh, and it was actually hand blown by King Zhuo II in, in 1485. Shut yeah, up! Yes, from 1485. It remained in the royal court of Lisbon until my ancestors brought it to the New World. It really is it's a priceless treasure. And it truly makes pancakes taste great. It really does. It lets, it lets the syrup breathe really aerates it. So we're going to get to that in a little bit. Oh, but I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to have it here and show it to you guys. Yeah, yeah. And you try surfing it. It's really great. Ooh. My grandmother would be very proud. All right, it's time now to run down the top five things on the web. That is true. We are going around the net. You have to waft it. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. And at number five is a, base, is a basketball trick shot. It really is. But what kind of trick shot, you ask? 
What? What kind? <laughs> That's the one. Oh, God. <laughs> Just what? roll the clip. <laughs> He nailed it. I don't know what he's going for, but I think he accomplished it. And truly, if the NBA wants to increase attendance, that should happen to a Kardashian at halftime every single game. Every single it is. game. There are a lot of them. There's several of them. Which I hate one? them all equally. Really? Yeah. You wouldn't have a, a first I mean, pick? I keep up with them. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I really do. Did you guys you love do. the episode when Tyga performed at like her 16th birthday party? It was so good. Is that real? A real episode. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I mean, wow. I was iPadding through wow. the whole thing and doing wow, other manly Kevin. duties at the same time. I'm disappointed. Are you? Yeah. Well, what do you watch? What's your guilty pleasure? Um, Big Brother in the summers. Okay, yeah, that's pretty Sometimes. terrible as well. <laughs> that's pretty... Sarah and I have a lot of So you just have bad taste seasonally. Whatever, you watch <laughs> Keeping Up with the Kardashians? Only when Teen Mom isn't on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Our number that four. baby Bentley, by the way, he is in for a world of hurt. For Teen Mom? <laughs> yes. I don't watch Choosing that either. Choosing the wrong parents. Go ah, ahead. I don't watch that show because it's so many kids getting pregnant these days. That's so hot. I mean, uh, terrible. <laughs> uh, one day I'm going to be on 16 and pregnant. One day. <laughs> Not as a pregnant 16-year-old. Okay. I'm just saying I'll make a wrong decision. Okay. Our number four video features a very unusual <laughs> instrument. You, you went, oh, all right. Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Judge me and thumbs up at the same time. <laughs> What'd you say about the instrument in this clip? Oh, something about an instrument. A very unusual instrument. It's not a, it's a piano. <laughs> the piano is the, the least know. unusual instrument ever. Nah, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the other instrument. <laughs> Should we just Other instrument. I just, I didn't even, that didn't register with me because I, you've never heard of a badgerman? I mean, everybody knows about it. <laughs> the badgerman, it's a synthesis, the perfect synthesis of a taxidermy badger and a theremin. Everybody's got one, right? No. Guitar Center's got a whole section. I've never heard of that. Whoa. Not even on PBS? <laughs> Should I have? See, this is, this is what happens when we cut funding for the arts, all right? Uh, you've probably never seen one of these, the wind weasel? <laughs> <laughs> no, as Good. a matter of fact, I have. It's pretty great. Oh, it's very cute. It's fun for the performer and the performee. That's in its butt. I'm so sorry about today's show, everybody. <laughs> I don't, I'm sorry, I just showed up. What are you talking about? We have pancakes. We do have pancakes. Well, we've got pancakes today. What was that noise? <laughs> it was the, the badger's upset. The ferret, whatever the hell I was playing. It's a ferret. Look, in at number three today, we have a tiny dog with a big problem. Oh. Indoor plumbing. Hmm? Go. It's not cute at all. That dog is filled with hate. It's true. That dog hates all sorts of modern things, like airplanes flying overhead and the sounds of sirens, uh, you know, coming from the television set. He also hates women's suffrage. I'm telling you, do not be... Do not stick up for that dog. Less bitch and more kitchen. Now I'm sorry for today's show. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome, everybody. <laughs> oh, in at number two today, an amazing post-Oscar clip from the folks at Jest. I have to say, I had no idea that a comedian as experienced as Billy Crystal would have such a rough time hosting such a simple event. <laughs> Extremely loud, incredibly close. That's how my relatives are watching the show. <laughs> this is my ninth time. Ninth time hosting the Oscars. <laughs> so tonight, just call me Warhorse. It's like that great speech that James Earl Jones made in Field of Dreams, when he talked about baseball. <coughs> baseball. 
The movies have always been there for us. They're the place to go, to laugh, to cry, to question, to text. Baseball. Horses were horse because his horse was through a Spielbergian tour de force. And now the Oscars may endorse the famous Mr. Joey. <laughs> That's great. Truth be told. That's so good. I think for Billy Crystal, those were some pretty great reactions, actually. I think he did it. Were they? Yeah. Still ahead, we're on drugs! Oh. Yeah! You'll see. It's a very fuzzy number one up next. You've clearly never been on enough drugs, because no one does this. No one has no, ever does that. No one has ever done that. of the viral video classic David After Dentist. Yeah. Well, sort of. You know, drugged up David questioned the reality of existence, but this girl, Nina, she really only has one question. What's going on now? Gauze. You had your wisdom teeth out. I did? Yeah, you did. What's going on now? Gauze. What? You had your wisdom teeth out. Don't touch it. What's in my mouth? Gauze. What? What do you want to do now? What's in my mouth? Gauze. Oh. Say bye. Bye. See you later. Ah, what's in my mouth? Gauze. Oh. Yay! <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have a Google alert set for videos titled What's in My Mouth, and... <laughs> <laughs> when that when that popped up, I was still pleasantly surprised. I was happy. I was good. So let's hear it for medical grade painkillers, everybody. Yay! It's a great game to play if you're in a frat house, by the way. What? I think it might be time to update our video of the year wall. Whoa. That was a really you know good what? video. Actually, I think you're right, Candace Bailey. I, I actually, I'm gonna agree with you. Okay. I am. Uh, you know, look, last month we actually awarded a video of the year to this guy. It's a self-destructing washing machine. Yeah. Yep. Uh, great video. Really, I mean, we had a laugh. We all had a moment together, but I think that was a little premature. Yes, you know what I mean? it was. January, January's a little early to award that, so. Congratulations, there you go. Nina. You are the new Attack of the Show of the Year. She did it. It's really a big day here. I love what? Oh my god. Kevin? Whoa! Oh, hey, it's a, hey guys, it's the washing machine from the video. I'm sure. Hey! I'm sure the washing machine's here to congratulate Nina and Cheryl. Kevin, on that. What? that washing machine looks pissed. It's a washing Whoa! machine. I'm telling you. Candace, it doesn't have feelings. I'm it's just a washing machine. I'm telling you, Kevin. Machine. It's fine. Oh, hey. oh no. Oh, Kevin. No, look out, look out. Kevin, look out. Washing machine, you need to stay back. I did not see that coming at all. <laughs> my lord, Airplane Joe, I'm so sorry. I know how hard you worked. Oh my, you're a bomber. Oh, well, at least we still have the pancakes, right, Candace? until the epic Mass Effect trilogy comes to a close. But until it drops, here are a couple pop culture titles to help weather the storm. First up, grab a donut and snag a duff. America's favorite family is coming home in the Simpsons arcade game. Just like the coin-op classic, you take the role of Homer, Marge, Bart, or Lisa as you make your way through the hot spots of Springfield to rescue Maggie from the evil clutches of Smithers and Mr. Burns. Go 
solo or team up with three of your buddies via local or online co-op as you pummel goons, zombies, and evil rabbits. Because what Simpsons game could be complete without evil rabbits? With tons of unlockables and eight levels, this game is perfect for anyone who dreams of the arcade beat-em-ups from the past. Welcome to your great So embiggen your cromulent life with the Simpsons arcade game on your PS3 or 360 for 10 bucks. But if you prefer comics to cartoons, then you will want to check out the first-person shooter Gotham City Imposters. In this online shooter, a team of wannabe Batman are attempting to clean the streets of a group of Joker fanatics determined to destroy Gotham City. Each character brings its own strengths to the game, from the quick and agile scout to the punishment-absorbing defender, along with their own arsenal of machine guns, bazookas, and sniper rifles. With each battle, you'll also earn experience points, which will unlock new gadgets like roller skates for speed, capes for flight, and grappling hooks to reach the tall rooftops. Along with Deathmatch, Imposters also has its own versions of King of the Hill and Capture the Flag, making this game perfect for anyone looking to get their team fortress on. So pick up Gotham City Imposters for both Xbox Live and the PlayStation 3 for 15 bones. Hey, we all love our Simpsons, our Batman, and our video games, so why not show the love for all three with these latest titles? Marge was the best. The reach on the vacuum cleaner was superb. Hey, listen, today's Gadgetron is a shock resistant and waterproof camera that I've nicknamed the Guantanamo. Hey, look, everybody, Matt Myra is here. Hey, how you doing? Doing well. Good, Good to have you, sir. It's camera time, everybody. As point and shoots go, uh, they get better and better all yeah, the time, yeah, sure. but they seem to always get more fragile and fragile. Yep. Uh, so Nikon is here to change that. This is the Coolpix AW or R100. Uh, Might as well call it the R100. Uh, Go ahead and drop that, Kev. Doesn't matter. What? Oh. Bring that washing machine back in here. <laughs> Let him shatter this into a billion pieces. This is the rugged cool picks. You'll notice the color is orange, like Guantanamo. Yeah. Uh, it comes in black and uh, blue, but in overseas you can get it in camouflage. But you can't but do you it can't, over here. Can you special? Is that because they hate us for our freedoms? Is I that why? I guess so. I guess so. Nikon. It's got GPS. Maybe something with GPS and camo you can't sell. Mm. I'm making that up. Uh, the <laughs> it camera itself right. <laughs> it does, right? The camera itself is light, weighs only 6.3 ounces. The lens is sealed to prevent moisture, but also the battery and memory compartment is sealed with a locking dial. Uh, oh, you can see that, that, yeah, that that's a rubber, it's a rubber gasket right there, and then you have a locking dial. No, it is significant because some of the previous rugged cameras I've used, there's just like a quick release button to mm. drop out the uh, battery, which if you do that underwater, your camera's broken. Right, oh, the, yeah, the yeah. memory card access or battery yeah. access, you hit it and then you're screwed. Yeah. Oh, okay, I like that. The resolution here on the three inch display is really, really great. Yeah. Bigger, than, uh, bigger and better than some of the other rugged point and shoots we've seen from Olympus yeah. or Panasonic. Not to call you out, but I just yeah. did. Oh. Gauntlet has been dropped. Uh, the LCD is great. Four hundred thirty thousand K display. <laughs> that sounds like an Iron Chef announcement. Gauntlet has well, been the dropped. gauntlet has been dropped, ladies and gentlemen. Secret ingredient is LCDs. <laughs> uh, there are no problems seeing it underwater, which cool. is great. The color's good. The display is actually it's very good. There's also GPS, mm -hmm. uh, which is some of the more advanced geotagging I've seen. So what I mean, I've I've had cameras with GPS in them in the past. Sure. Is is this a, a, a newfangled GPS here? Well, what the it does that other GPSs don't do, since it has a built-in compass as well, it tells you what direction you were facing. Oh. When you took the photograph. Very nice. Right? Come uh, on. You mentioned going underwater with this thing. Yeah. So, I mean, how rugged is it? Is this like splash poof, or is this we can go diving to crazy depths? Listen, I don't want to steal the washing machine's thunder. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, oh. This is water, folks. I hope that's not a Portuguese heirloom bowl. Oh. oh wait a minute. Oh, my God. You're soaking Check in it. Check it out. Let's take a picture underwater. Whoa! Oh. That was pretty magical, you guys. Uh, it, you can, it's good to about 10 meters, which oh, is to say good. it's 30 feet. So if you are worried about that and you drop your camera into more than 30 feet of water, you're not gonna find it anyway. Right. Uh, so, yeah, so here's the deal. It's shock resistant, it's uh, it's rated to a drop of 1.5 meters. I've dropped it a lot, it still works, I'm okay. a little wet. But you know, it's a, it's a great. It's a I, great I know you camera. get excited for point and shoots. Yeah, I sure do, you but guys. Let's, let's talk about the image quality because the AW100 comes with a 16 megapixel CMOS sensor and a yeah. variety of uh, menu settings and picture modes and all that jazz. Do is there anything of note? 
Yeah, well, no, I mean, it's it's a pretty Does great. It well? it's, mini it's minimal as far as, like, picture settings from the other Nikons we've seen, but okay. that doesn't affect the image quality. The image quality is actually pretty great. Uh, right there, that's with the flash on. Uh, sometimes you get noise issues with, with the flash, mm -hmm. but... Uh, this one seems to suffer more in the low light with okay. the flash. So you'll see we got a couple other images right here. That's a macro setting, which is good for That's a point good. and shoot, right? Little sneaker keychain and a beard bomb from Bernardo in the back. Very yeah. nice. <laughs> uh, but that that is lower light, and there is noise on that image, which, you know, I'm okay with the levels, because if you're doing something extreme, don't worry about levels, man. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Just stick the landing. <laughs> uh, those were the most unextreme pictures I've yeah, ever seen. Right. <laughs> you know, in case you're cruising by your bookshelf at an unsafe speed. Maybe you're watching TV. Maybe you're reading some books. Whatever, this can do all of that. Um, with regard to instant on, is in terms of the turning on, yeah. snapping a photo, is it is it 15 seconds? Is it a minute? Or it's very it, quick. Yeah. Uh, you can get this on and snap a photo in about two seconds. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, right. and between shots, it's about a second. All right, so it's pretty, pretty good specs there. Yeah. Now, what about video? I know 720 and 1080p are available. Yeah. Um, but sometimes with small cameras, the video quality is just not worth it. Yeah, this camera is actually pretty great. The video looked really sharp. Mm -hmm. uh, if you take a look here, we're above water. Now we're under. What? What? We've never seen the turtle pond from this angle. I know. Now you're scaring them in their natural habitat. I like to break ground, but not break cameras. The color reproduction is very good. That was, I'm, I'm sorry. That was fantastic. That. I apologize. Don't you dare apologize. Apologize <laughs> for the apology. That was beautiful. Uh, yeah, but again, there was, there was a little bit of a, an audible sound from the zoom. But again, if you're doing extreme sports. Right, if you're watching your TV loud enough, you're not going to hear that. I'm not going to worry about it. If you're, uh, if you're playing a muffled PS Vita. <laughs> oh, don't, don't poke the bear with a stick. Um, you guys can get the Nikon Coolpix AW100 for $289 yeah. right now on Amazon, which yeah. is a normally. Uh, it's normally $350. Okay, so right so now you deal. drop it in your cart, it's $289 on At Amazon. At that price, what are we rating it? We're going to give it a five. What? Out of five. What? I'm sorry. The price is so good. It's an extremely versatile camera. The image quality is great for a rugged point and shoot. It's one of the best I have seen. And if you're looking for a durable camera that can hold up to literally water and drop <laughs> it. Can hold up to almost anything, like a meter drop or yeah. 10 meters underwater. Listen, get it. This is the five one. Five out of five, you Matt guys. Matt Myra, you are a gem, sir. Thank you, Water, Kevin. Waterproof and rugged as well. Oh I love God. you. Uh, that's it for today's Gadget Prawn. Now let's say hi to our very special lady friend. It's Candace. Five out of five, see Bales. I'm not allowed to dance. They told me not to dance. Still ahead, comedian Mark Marin will be here live telling it like it is. And later, DV Tuesday with Chris Gore tells us about Hugo. Hugo the movie, not the president of Venezuela, just to be clear. is an amazing comedian, and I swear I didn't need the prompter to tell me that. I truly think he has the best podcast around, and now Hulu is letting us take a look at a day in his life. With the podcast, I don't fully realize how big it is. I know people in the industry listen to it, and they respect it, and people are getting a lot out of it, a lot of, and for a lot of different reasons. Do you need water or anything? Uh, I don't think so. Do people usually have water? <laughs> yes, it's really, it's been established that water is necessary. I don't know. I don't want to want to You think be... you can make it through an hour without water? Uh, Maybe I should right take here. water. This is a backyard, the hills of the Highland Park. This is um, awesome. Do you entertain? Uh, I have. I could probably do it more, but like then it always really becomes about, well, who comes? <laughs> How well do I really know that person? <laughs> Just because we're on the podcast, does that mean I can ask them over for a party? <laughs> <laughs> like, would you come up and have dinner? You live really far away from me. Oh, see, that was that was the worst. <laughs> WTF, everybody! It's Mark Marin. Wow! You arrived. You arrived. That's, That's why a, they're here. What, look at that! All those people that work here are very enthusiastic yeah, to be working yeah, here. It's not contractually obligated at all. They really want to be here and clap and applaud. That documentary footage. Someone should have told me to comb my hair. Maybe no. that would have been a good idea. It's real. It's raw. It's yeah, like, yeah. Just got up. Now I don't need to. It's, it's only going to be on TV or something. Yeah. It's very into the wild. Uh, so, oh yeah! Right after that, I start uh, you know eating herbs and living in a trailer, <laughs> <Right>. yeah. <laughs> bear wrestling. Absolutely. Uh, that is the compound, right? That's the cat ranch that we. Well, hear I wouldn't a lot call about. it a compound because that would imply that it was secure in some way. <laughs> no, uh, apparently you can find my address on the internet very easily and come right over if you'd like. Are you on one of those? Because they have those sites where you put in someone's name and then well, it zooms I... in GPS and shows you the name and the and you can street. Well, view I don't it. want to encourage anyone to do that, but I have. Gotten... Just, we, I mean, <laughs> no, I got a phone call once. I'd I gotten into some trouble on Twitter, which happens very quickly. Right. And uh, I called out a guy, and then he called me at my house. 
<laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was, but you know what? I knew in my head that that's what happened. Like, I had this thing with this dude. He was a fan. He had an issue. I misread a tweet, the tone, uh, and I, like, I responded with my tone that I assumed he was responding. Whatever. Right. But anyway. Your tone, which is kid gloves and lollipops, always. Never, it's as never. so gentle as I think be. I used a C word for him, you right. know. <laughs> and, uh, and sure enough, like 15 minutes later, the phone rings in my living room. I'm like, that's that guy. And. <laughs> And I pick up the phone. I'm like, hello? He's like, who are you to call me the C word? And I'm like, the weird thing that, that I and it was very conscious. I did not. The, my first response was, how are you calling me at home? Who are you? Where'd you get my number? I decided in that moment to just address the problem that he was having as if it was fine for him to call right. me. <laughs> and, <laughs> And I did. I said, well, look, you started it, and there was an issue. you got to watch your tone. And we, we hashed out the problem. We're in the middle of working this out. <laughs> and, and he literally says, he says, I just can't believe you didn't get creeped out by me calling you at home. <laughs> I love that you think I can't be rational with this guy, and even he's like, well, well Mark's I, weirder than I. Yeah, exactly. He thinks this is totally normal. Well, I, I thought that that'd be the best way, because if I would have said, you know, Dude, what's wrong with you? I'm calling the police and hung up on him. Right. Yeah, I'd never knock, get rid knock, of him. Knock, knock, on the right. front door is what right. happens next, and so then he's I, sharpening a blade. Exactly. Yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, you took it a little further he than is. I did. But I, well, you called him a chauvinist, right? I did anticipate having <laughs> to make him coffee. Um, <laughs> Oh, you're here? Okay, let's hash this out in my house since you could, I hung up on you on the phone. It worked out okay, you know. Uh, we worked through it, and uh, I apologized, and he apologized. Then he had some suggestions for the podcast, and, <laughs> and, uh, and I said, look, I really got to go. I don't think we're at this point where we're going to, you're producing my show. Right. So, uh, so that was weird, but uh, don't, uh, please don't. Don't, 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 don't drive don't, by the house on street view. Don't, don't, don't show up. Yeah. But if they were to show up, what, what times are best for you? Well, right when, after this will be good, between 5 and 7, I'm having I'll tell you some stuff. I've got to get rid of some stuff in the garage. <laughs> um, well, I, you know, you mentioned he's obviously a fan of the podcast. You have some crazy fans, and I mean that in the greatest way. That they crazy. They make you rings, baked goods. Yeah, I got the uh, the ring. Can you get that? They can get it in there. Uh, they, that they'll, was, they'll get it. They'll figure that it out. That was a great close-up. We got to dial up the technology. Um, Hold on, it's a really slow quick. zoom. That was amazing. We got to change <laughs> lenses, and we're back to one and three, two. Close up on ring. Perfect. Boom! Oh! In focus. That's when you're supposed to move it around like yeah. crazy so the camera. Can... Some guy made that for me, uh, you know, and he, he documented the entire process of making it. Like, this is phase one. I'm not real good at this part, but I hope it comes out good. So I was part of this whole process. He put a little diamond in there. And I've worn it ever since. I haven't really taken it off. I think it's magic, you know? But you trust you trust the baked goods that fans will come up and give you at, at performances? You. You know, I think that I have a pretty good sense of that. I mean, I handled the phone call okay. I, uh, <laughs> right, but it's I hard mean, to poison somebody through telephony. I, look, I've been sober over 12 years. What's the worst that can happen? I get a freebie? <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't think that... Uh, I generally don't think that they're going to poison me. And the worst thing about the baked goods, really, is that they... I tried to tell them, like, I'm a little crazy around food, and, and I love the baked goods, but... People, if, if 10 people bring, you know, cartons of stuff or, or right. Tupperware full of stuff, look at that. Here's a sack of blueberries and a whole pound cake. Yeah, yeah that was, I think, really good. I know what that, that was a, a s'mores pie. Now, what the problem is, and those are cake pops, yeah. The, the problem is, is that I, no one's going to eat all this stuff, and I, and, I, and I don't give it away. So I end up, because I don't want to throw the food out, it ends up in my hotel room. So after a show, I'm surrounded by, it looks like the saddest bake sale ever. And... <laughs> And I'm like the only you're customer. You know? You're never going to save the rec center. You know, when I started doing comedy, I never thought that, you know, the big payoff would just be me in a hotel room eating a cake pop trying to decide whether I was going to masturbate or not. You know? Yeah. So that was... But I thought it'd be a... I really thought it'd be a bigger party than right. that. Those, those days are behind right. me. And yeah. that decision's made. The answer is yes, and then yeah, you're going to eat the cake pop. That's right. It's just, what do you do first? You get, like, yeah. which is the reward? Yeah. You know, like... You can't get crumbs on it, because well, that's the lowest of the lows. You know, generally, you want to save the masturbating for the last thing because that's the big thing that's, you know what i mean that's like this is i know this is going to feel great really is, cake pots hit or miss yeah, you know that is really is the icing on the cake uh, it absolutely is i'm if sorry you i'm no, so sorry you can, you're going to go all the way over i with did I went, good. I went yeah sure um, you have added such a laundry list of of amazing guests on the show is there a big get coming up or is there somebody 
uh, in the future that you'd really like to have well, that over Mindy to the Kaling episode's going to drop the same day as the uh, Hulu premiere for the the Day in the Life, which you saw there. It's uh, Morgan Spurlock saying on Hulu they're going to premiere that at South by Southwest, and that episode will go up. Uh, I've recently did. Uh, yeah, you know, I got Danny McBride coming up. I got awesome. Craig Ferguson coming up. I've got. Um, yeah, I've got so many. Like we just put Al Yankovic up on Monday. Yeah. Stephen Wright just went up a few weeks ago. Russell Brand. When people come in and they sit down uh, across the table from you at the cat ranch, do, do you get a sense that they're worried that you're going to? I, I've, I've heard some guests. Uh, Joe Latrulio, one of them, was like, "Oh, this is going to be a this is going to be a session. Yeah. It's not a sit down. It's not an interview. You're going right. to take out your your scalpel and dissect their brain and figure out where their wires went wrong and where they went right." I don't know. You know I think that the the show has got this reputation because I tend to talk about myself very openly, and and right. and usually guests will meet me halfway. I don't look. Or at you'll myself. drag them halfway at sometimes. But which there's I love. only a certain point. I mean, I don't want to hack on myself. I right. mean, some interviews get deeper than others. Some are just funny. Some are not. You know, dark or weird. But there there has been times. Where where people who have gotten to know the show and are going to be on the show, they're nervous. Right. So they kind of load up with like, okay, my dad did that, and and uh, <laughs> you know, but that wasn't that bad. And but I don't think and so. They're 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 preparing to do that, but I don't need that. I mean, I just want it sure. to be engaged conversation, and it's always uh, surprising. But some some don't get all weird and dark. <laughs> like Mindy would not get all weird and dark. Right. Uh, you know, I'm sure it's in there, but I didn't get it. <laughs> you didn't rather, you didn't pull well, that closet I, door. You know, I, I don't I don't you know I don't literally say like you know like no something must have happened. You're you're screwy, you know. Uh, <laughs> right. But uh, but if you just talk, uh, things come out, and, right. and it's my belief that as long as the conversation is authentic, then you'll get a sense of who that person is. Because if you're going to talk for an hour, even if you're hiding something, that's going to become apparent. So then you're that guy. Right. Well, I could tell there was that something. word or that nugget. Yeah, going yeah. To there's drop something else going on, on there. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. Who he is. Yeah. Do you ever find I you, I again I listen all the time, and I, I get a sense that you're the kind of guy that could size up any situation and decide you're going to analyze it and turn it into something that's either. Uh, tragic or hilarious. You could be at a funeral and find the greatest thing about it. You could be at the birth of a of a, of a new child and go. Right. This is why this is screwed up. Yeah. Here we go. Do you ever? Does, is that ever? I don't an know issue? if it's a plan. You know, I, it really is rel relative to how it directly affects me. Uh, that that's where I draw from. I, I'm not. I'm only good at. Uh, I can't do general observational comedy. But right. if something really crappy happens to me, I'm going to have to make it funny just to live with it. If I experience joy, I have to tear that apart because that's uncomfortable. <laughs> for me. Right. Unless you've got a cake pop in your hand in the... In the well, that's, uh, that's different. That's joy tempered with self-hatred, which I'm fine with. <laughs> you know, if I can... <laughs> if I could sit and do something that's so good, but I know it's so horrible for me, to me, that's perfection. Right. Like, oh, this is amazing. I hate me. You know, that... <laughs> That, uh, you know, that I can live with that. That's riding the edge for I love me. It. Well, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed watching and listening to you ride that edge, good sir, and I hope you continue to do it for many, many years. Well, I brought you shirts. Oh, my God. There you Thank go. Thank you. There's this one. That's for you, and I brought Candace a oh, kitty shirt. Candace gets a kitty shirt. Oh. Mark Maron, everybody. So Thank you so much. For Real honor to meet you. Thank you. Uh, you guys can catch A Day in the Life. That's a Hulu episode on Hulu Plus March 12th. And go listen to his podcast on iTunes or go to the website. You can get the shirts there, WTFPod.com. But now, let's go to Planet Canvas. Thank you so much for the shirt. That's so sweet of you. Stay tuned. Chris Gore makes your movie buying decisions for you right after this. <laughs> doing some skiing with his GoPro camera. So what happens next? Does he hit a tree? Does he hit the jump too fast and crash? Or does he stick the landing? We'll have the answer after the break. some skiing with his GoPro camera. So what happens next? Does he hit a tree? Does he hit the jump too fast and crash? Or does he stick the landing? He may have broken his legs, but at least he got it on camera. Did it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the vice president of the G4 chapter of the Society of Professional Journalists. Sarah Underwood, come on down. <laughs> okay, thanks guys. It's time to start the feed. All right. All the news you need to know. The feed, 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 feed. It's Tuesday.
Wednesday, February 28th, and here are your top stories. The invitations are out, and it's official. Next Wednesday is iPad Day. The March 7th event date had leaked a few weeks ago, but today Apple sent out invitations for the forthcoming event in San Francisco, where the original iPad was unveiled in early 2010. At this point, most agree that we can likely expect the refreshed tablet to be slightly thinner and sport a quad-core processor, high-res retina display with four times the number of pixels, and possibly 4G LTE compatibility. As far as when this new iPad will hit stores, some are saying it will be, quote, near immediate availability. So get ready to break that piggy bank. Uh, AT&T has proposed a new plan to compensate for the ridiculous growth of mobile data usage. Make the app makers pay for it! What? Yeah, make them! We don't want to! But uh, you know what? That might not be a good thing because on the surface, it may seem like a good idea. A data hogging app would pay AT&T a bunch of cash up front and then they wouldn't end up counting the app's data usage against your monthly data limit. But this could inevitably lead to app developers charging more for their apps and a system that favors the highest bidding apps, whether they suck or not. Plus, it could end up screwing smaller developers and, of course, you and me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, hold the phone. AT&T screwing the consumer? I've never heard of such a thing. Now, soon you may be using your Kinect for something more than dancing like a fool. Microsoft just showed off two projects that demonstrate the future of the motion capture device. One called the Holoflector. It's an augmented reality mirror that displays computer graphics in real time around people and objects in the reflection. Meanwhile, they're working with Whole Foods to test a Kinect-enabled motorized shopping cart that will follow you around the store, track the items placed in the cart, and automatically cross them off your shopping list. The coolest part? The cart will take care of the payment when you walk out the door so you can kiss waiting in line goodbye. <sighs> I love the future. <laughs> and finally, the story of the world's dumbest hitman ever, a hapless criminal who created a website offering his services under the very, very subtle name, hitmanforhire.net. Yeah. The name was so ridiculous that even the developer who built the site thought it had to be a joke, but um, yeah, it wasn't. Fortunately, no hits were ever carried out. The bumbling crook would approach his targets dressed in black, announce that he was a hitman, and then blackmail the person for tens of thousands of dollars if they wanted to live. <laughs> um, mercifully, the site has been taken down and the stooge is behind bars. First degree stupidity is just one of the charges. Aww. I'm Sarah Underwood and you've just been fed. Stick around, Chris Gore will be here with DVDs yeah. right after this. Yeah. The feed is brought to you by the General Automobile Insurance Services. For a great low rate you can get online, go to the General and save some time. Tomorrow on Attack of the Show, Actress Alexis Knapp brings the party to our studio with the epic found footage flick Project X. Then Chris Gore heads to the Asian underground for an all animation look at the best films from the East. And strap on your boots, we hit the slopes with the updated snowboarding classic SSX on Game Break. It's Attack of the Show tomorrow at 7. Physical media isn't dead, according to Chris Gore anyway. Welcome back, film expert, Chris Gore. Yeah. Chris Gore, Chris Gore, Chris Gore. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Candace. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I love All that right. Welcome. Uh, what's up first? First, we have Oscar winning Hugo. Not for Best Picture, though. Now, this film racked in Oscars this weekend. I thought it was great. What'd you think? I think it was great, but it's strange to see, like, Martin Scorsese make a kid's film. I mean, it's mm -hmm. about this kid, Hugo, who discovers George Méliès, uh, the famous filmmaker, illusionist. He created uh, modern special effects, I mean, uh -huh. in movies from, you know, the early 1900s. And he's just working at a toy shop, but 
and it's very passionate. This is this is like something close to Scorsese's heart. Mm -hmm. The the subject matter. Um, I just think it's a little slow moving for well, me. I was gonna say I feel like it's too slow moving to be a kids movie. Too slow moving, but uh, it's got a lot of fun special features in it. Oh, what are those special features? Uh, really interesting. Sasha Baron Cohen is in the special feature where mm -hmm. most of the special features and extras. Oh, it was great to work with so and so. It was great to work with so and so. Oh God, what do you He think? said Scorsese <laughs> was the worst director under six foot. He said he ripped up a copy of the script in front of him. At the trailer, and it uh -huh. was it was just a whole. I mean, it's Sasha Baron Cohen being yeah, funny, obviously. just ripping on that. And then the behind the scenes were great because you got to see how how Scorsese recreated some of these famous George Melies shots, like the A Trip to the Moon, where you see the it moon really was face. Amazing. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. Visually stunning, great, but. It's weird, a Scorsese movie with no blood, no violence. <laughs> what are you gonna do? I missed that. <laughs> I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what's the bottom line? Bottom line, I really liked it too. Uh, it's a rent. Okay. It's worth seeing. That's good, that's good. Worth seeing, Next sure. DVD. Justice League Doom. Now uh, your boy Batman gets the rest of the Ju Justice League in a bit of trouble in this film, doesn't he? Uh, no, it's it's <laughs> epic. I mean, uh, it's it's... A story that focuses on every member of the Justice League has a weakness, and they're kind of all taken out almost Godfather style, uh -huh. which is amazing, including Bruce Wayne is thrown into a casket underground with the skeleton of his dead parents! What? what? Ew, that's My crazy. parents are dead, <laughs> Bruce Wayne! That should be his middle name, but it's it's. I mean, it's dark. It's definitely for adults. Um, also, it's the I mean, extras. Uh, great extras on it, um, including uh, like behind the scenes stuff, and then also uh, there's a tribute to Dwayne McDuffie, who uh, wrote the original story, the comic book that this this is based on. Mm -hmm. um, amazing story of his life. He was he went to college at 10 years old. Oh, what? Um, yeah, get to college at what? 10 years old. Uh, amazing. But but it's That's cool crazy. just to see because there have been so many incarnations of the Justice League and you see how they added Cyborg into it um, as a black character, black member of the Justice League. Because all the characters, all the car uh, comic book characters back then were all named Black Lightning or Black This or Black Panther. They're, I'm glad they got away with that. They got, they got away from that. It's like so stupid. So they, so they added Cyborg in. He really works as part of the team. Okay. All right. What's the bottom line? Bottom line is buy this. Buy. It's my favorite. It's my favorite of all these uh, DC uh, translations. Okay. Did a great job on it. Uh, what else do you have? A good old fashioned orgy. <laughs> yeah. I yes. gotta say, I get a little concerned when you tell me to watch an orgy, orgy Chris. <laughs> well, <laughs> I sent over a lot of DVDs, and I hope you watch the right one. Uh, I, I I hope so too. The, I mean, it's it's about a, a group of uh, friends who are gonna lose this house at the end of the summer, and they're gonna have a big party before they lose the house. They decide the theme of the party should be let's have an orgy. Yeah, um, it, you know what? It actually reminds me of my ex boyfriend and all of his friends. Yeah. Keep talking. <laughs> That's all Go I'm gonna on. say. An ex-boyfriend, I will say. They had an orgy at their house. They had weird. an orgy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, you like that, don't you? <laughs> okay, so they had an orgy. You That's saw all. The, was that even I like was the sleeping. movie? I was sleeping. <laughs> they had an orgy. It's weird, I know. It's weird. So tell me more. Because <laughs> or, orgies, uh, Candace, you speak from experience. Orgies, I was n not in it. They always sound like good ideas, and then feelings get involved. How is it? Uh... I was sleeping. I do not know. <laughs> <laughs> it's an X. In, in, in any case, uh, the, the, uh, the movie's fun. You'll see uh -huh. a lot of familiar faces. Jason Sudeikis is in it. Uh, I mean, it's not epic comedy, uh -huh. but I, I do like the fact that they handled it. Uh, they handled it actually in an adult way. I thought it was a really funny movie. Actually, I really enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, and, and there is there is nudity. There is lots some nudity. of nudity. Lots not, of nudity. Uh, not as much as you'd like. <laughs> a lot more nudity. Plenty than of maybe nudity. You'd... Bottom line. Uh, bottom line is rented. <laughs> We're seeing good old fashioned orgy. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. For more gore, check out his Podcrash podcast on iTunes. Okay, so about this orgy. <laughs> I was not in it. I, get, I, I was sleeping. Right, I, I get that. But when, like, how many people I were there when you I found out the next up? day. It was like 10 people in the hot tub. I wasn't there. Thanks I don't believe that at all. Does anybody believe that? And did you stay? And did you stay? Uh, why would I be in an orgy? Did I have no reason to be in an orgy. Well, yes, sorry. to have sex with multiple people I at the same time. That's that. usually the reason people have an orgy. <laughs> Thanks to but, Mark Maron. Thank Chris you, Mark Maron. Thank you, Chris Gordon, Matt Myron. So, this boy, did you, after the orgy, did you break up with him immediately? Or did you guys stay together <laughs> for a little while? We broke up. How soon after? Good night. How many orgies after the original orgy? Oh,